Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have another golf ball review for you today, and as you have probably seen from the title, we are doing the TaylorMade Tour Response Stripe Golf Ball. Let's dive right in. So many of you already know I have already reviewed the TaylorMade Tour Response before. Um, that was about a year ago. Um, it, was, it was a previous model. This is actually the 2022 model. It's the most recent one they have for this. Um, but they came out last year with this stripe uh, that basically was kind of a competition to some of these other golf balls. A lot of the uh, alignment tools in golf are getting a lot more extravagant. Companies are fighting over that. I make a big deal about it on my channel. I know some of you are kind of rolling your eyes because you just don't get it, and I, I understand that. But this is a big deal. A lot of companies are really ramping up their alignment tools because it's separating golf balls and this one was really a surprise when I saw it in the stores for the first time because I mean yeah we've seen the triple track where it's three lines we've seen that the picks where it's kind of got different images and you got to line it up but no one had for, but for some reason no one had thought hey, let's just put a whole line around the entire thing and see what happens. And this is a nice, thick line. Um, I'll be honest with you, I have used this golf ball over the, the past six months, seven months, here and there, just to putt with. This alignment tool does work, but we'll get more to that in just a second. So um, let's dive in here. This golf ball comes in at a price point of $42.99. They actually went up this year, uh, which I'm a little upset about because at $39.99, it was already kind of in that price point. You know, the $39.99 price point for a value tour ball is pretty much about as expensive as it gets for the value line. Uh, once you get past that, you're pretty much in the tour line, top of the top of the uh, budget grade. However, $39.99 for a value tour ball is pretty expensive, but now it's $42.99. It's gone up $3. And to be honest with you, you're gonna most people are gonna look at Vice at $37. Uh, you know, Cut still has $29.99 for the DC, which is a great ball. So there's a lot of competition here, and TaylorMade's gonna have to really impress me here to value that price point. So let's go ahead and dive into the uh, the looks of the golf ball. Let's see how the design is. Um, as you can see there. On the front, Taylor made this is they actually make these in different colors. So this is not the only color they make it in. It comes in a green stripe, a red stripe, purple stripe. You can, you can get a variety of them. This one I it, we got was the the pink and blue. That's more my style. But you can see the Taylor made on the front there. And then of course, if you look at the side, it does say Tour Response. And then of course, you've got this alignment tool all the way around it. And essentially, uh, it, it's pretty thick. It's not like a, a, a semi. You know, it's not like a thick line. It's actually most of the golf ball. I would actually venture to say that probably the at least half of this golf ball is painted a different color than white, so it's actually a lot on there. It does have a number as well, you'll see right there. And the whole idea of that is it's just able to kind of line your putts up a little bit better and make it a little easier. So it is an interesting golf ball design. Um, it's not going to be for everyone. It does feel really good. You can tell TaylorMade that TaylorMade has a really good process for making golf balls. They're always uh, really well coated. They always feel premium, and that's the case here too. It feels really premium. It feels like it has a good coating of urethane on there. I imagine it's going to have no trouble stopping on the green whatsoever. All right, so on the chipping and putting green, I got to be honest with you, let's start with the putting. Uh, the golf ball feels really, really good. Um, it has just the perfect balance of, uh, you know, the sponge effect coming off like a bouncy ball, uh, but also just having a little bit of a press to let you know for feedback. Uh, if you do hit it off the toe or you do miss it a little bit, there's enough of a press there to let you know, but it's not much. It's not an abundance of difference. I mean, it's, it's probably the difference between, you know, if, if the meter was balanced, a five out of 10 and a six out of 10. It's, it's very short, but it's a great balance. I love it. Um, it does not take a lot to get this golf ball to travel with the putter, um, which again can be a learning curve if you're used to firmer golf balls. Um, but I actually really enjoyed not having to come back as much. The golf ball really travels a long way. If you do miss hit it, you're gonna lose a few feet though. It's not very forgiving when it comes to the putter. But honestly, once you get into this line where you've got a three piece kind of tour value golf ball, forgiveness isn't really the name of the game anymore. It's more about uh, you know spin and being able to work it. Before I get into the short game around the green, I do want to talk about this alignment tool. This alignment tool really is phenomenal. It does help. It's so easy to see. It's so big. I feel like it's for everyone. Uh, I don't think everyone's going to like how it looks, but I'm, I'll be honest with you. It doesn't bother me as far as the looks, and it does help me sink more putts. And I'll be honest with you, there's instant feedback. You can tell immediately if your golf ball is kind of wobbling like this, uh, you miss hit it. If it's going straight on like that, you know you hit it great, and if you miss the hole, you just did the read wrong. And having that type of feedback really does help because sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you will hit a putt. Oh, we've all been there as golfers where you hit one and you're like, did I miss hit it or did it just not break? And you don't know. And you kind of, and if you're me, you ask your partners you play with and they don't know either because they weren't paying attention, which just drives me nuts. But having that type of feedback immediately to where you putt it, you can see the wobble, you can see what it does, 
it's really good. TaylorMade's done a phenomenal job with their design team on this one. And uh, I, I gotta say, as far as an alignment tool, it's a five out of five. Going in with the chipping and putting, uh, you know, to see if there's any spin. There is spin, there's a good healthy amount for sure. The golf ball doesn't have any trouble whatsoever checking up when it's around the green. Um, I got a lot of checkup. It's not a ton, not as much as your tour level, you know, your, your Bridgestone Tour BXS and your TP5 or anything like that. I think the TP5 is gonna be a lot more spinny of a golf ball, but it definitely does check up. There's no issue. The urethane Thing grips really tight and again it feels really good it doesn't take a lot with the uh, the chips around the green to get the ball to travel the distance you want it to so honestly it performs really good it was pretty consistent for the most part so overall I was really impressed but as I should be as I said before in this price range um, I expected it to kind of check every box there and it did so it's off to a good start but let's go into the numbers now and let's see how those are okay so real quick before I get into the numbers the feel as far as the rest of the golf clubs extremely extremely soft uh, not like your you know Wilson 50 compression, 29 compression, like where you don't even feel it. Um, again, it's a really good, healthy balance. It, it, it comes off extremely soft, but you do know when you miss hit it, which is perfect. That's really how the majority of people need a golf ball to be. You want it to feel like butter when you hit it great, and you want it to be a little, a little firm, just a little bit when you miss hit it, so that way you know. Uh, that way you got some feedback and you, you don't realize. Sometimes with the really, really soft golf balls, even if you miss hit them, it still feels like butter, and then you're like, well, I don't understand why it's not going as far, and it kind of throw you off your game. Checks every box there, really enjoyed the feel of it, even off the driver, and it's really consistent on how it feels. It's consistent across the board. Sometimes I test golf balls where, you know, at first with the wedges, they're a little firm, but then as you get into the, the hybrid and the driver, they kind of soften up because you're compressing them more. Not the case here. It has the same consistent feel throughout. So again, and again, with the putter, uh, you know, the wedges around the green, now with the driver, the nine iron, the five iron, the seven iron, it's just, it's really consistent all throughout. I don't see that a lot. It's not as common as you would think it would be. So I uh, really love that about it, but let's get into these numbers. Let's see how it did. All right, so getting into these numbers, let's start off with the nine iron. Looking at 90.5 on your ball mile per hour speed, that's slightly less than average. Uh, 124.5 on total distance, that's again, slightly less than average. And 117.5, again, slightly less than average. And a 22.7, so that's about a mid ball flight. So uh, with these golf balls, I was a little surprised as soft as it felt. I thought it would compress a little bit better. Now I did test this golf ball twice. I tested it the first time um, and my, um, Swing Caddy went through an update and it ended up, I had to factory reset it and so I lost all the data. But I will say I was getting a little bit more than that the first time, so it could have been the conditions. Um, so I would say probably average is where it's at, but right now it is on a little less than average. Uh, still felt really good though, and what I love is it was really consistent. It had a lot of forgiveness. Uh, even on miss hits, I would hit it maybe like 110, 112, opposed to 117. So losing seven yards, five yards isn't that bad on miss hits, especially with a, like a nine iron, a short iron, or a wedge. Um, so not bad, not bad. It could have been better. Uh, going right into the seven iron, 5,888 on your spin, which usually is the case with TaylorMade for my long irons, or mid irons, I guess. Uh, mid and long irons are usually that way for TaylorMade for me. 106.8, uh, that's a, basically that's average. 161.7, that's a little bit better than average. 150.1, uh, right there along with average. And 17.7, it had a very low launch angle, which again, for mid irons and long irons with TaylorMade with me, that seems to be the case a lot of the time. Uh, those are actually really good numbers there. I don't mind the under 6,000 spin because I was, you know, I, I've gotten in a habit over the last few weeks of really getting in the slot and trying to hit draws with my mid irons. So that's probably what was happening there. I have full confidence that I could open the face a little bit and hit a fade and the golf ball is going to stop no problem whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. Um, I have not had any issues with spin. I have not had any issues with sticking greens with this golf ball. So that doesn't really worry me that much. Let's go into the five hybrid. We got 3,531 on the spin, which is again, usually the case with TaylorMade. Uh, that's actually very low. 117 on the ball mile per hour speed, which is average. 191, uh, which again, which is average. 176.9, which is average. And a 12.9, so it launched low, which again, for TaylorMade, that's, that's pretty par for the course, pun intended. Uh, so again, those are really good numbers. There's nothing wrong with a golf ball being average across the board. That just means it's consistent. Uh, if you're new to the channel, new to review, sometimes I'll test golf balls where, you know, the nine iron's phenomenal, and then the seven iron's okay, and then, you know, the, the hybrid's 122 mile an hour ball speed, and I'm hitting it 200 yards, which is crazy, and then the driver's okay. And, you know, sometimes that's good, but it's really inconsistent when you get out to the course to try to remember 
hey, I'm hitting this club, what's this gonna do, you know? So I, I like the consistency there. Across the board, everything's consistent. The golf ball was really forgiving. Um, you can see by these pictures I'm putting on there as well. I mean, there's a good dispersion there. Uh, it's really consistent and, and forgiving, and that's what a lot of golfers are gonna want, and that's what I think you really are paying extra for here, um, and that a lot of golfers are gonna be drawn to is that. But before we get too much into that, let's go ahead and finish off with the driver. Uh, 2,925 on your spin, which is slightly above average. Uh, 243.3, uh, that's above average, that's awesome. 134.6, that's above average. 222.7, again, above average, and it launched a little higher this time, 15.3, which is really, really good. Honestly, it felt really good with the driver, and again, the consistency was key. It was really consistent. Um, even times when I would kind of miss hit it off the driver a little bit, I'd think, okay, I'm gonna lose five, 10 yards. Sometimes it would be the exact same yardage. So a high, high, high level of forgiveness there from the driver. Um, I don't see that a lot. Now, granted, I do have one of the most forgiving drivers on the market, but still, high forgiving golf ball, high forgiving driver. It was a lot of fun. I didn't expect that. So really good there. Real quick before I give you my closing thoughts, I do want to touch on the durability, and I gotta say that it's really, really good, which again is pretty standard for TaylorMade. TaylorMade never has an issue with durability whatsoever. As you can see from this golf ball, you can see some, some scratches, some scuffs. There's a little bit of red from my, uh, from my net that I hit into, but this golf ball was hit over 110 times, which normally it's like 60, but I had to test it twice, and I used the same golf ball to test it again. So with that being said, this thing's seen a lot, and I gotta be honest with you, 110 is gonna be a round for even your really bad golfers. So uh, it's absolutely gonna get you through more than a round as long as you don't lose it. I would even say it could probably go two full rounds. I mean, TaylorMade seems to be that way most of the time when I test their golf balls, and uh, this one's no different. Uh, TaylorMade does a phenomenal job across the board with their durability and their consistency, and again, it shows here, so that's awesome. So final thoughts. Okay, so I, I like the golf ball a lot. I love how it feels. I love how it reacts around the green. It spins a lot, but not too much. Um, it has feedback. It's consistent. Um, it looks good. The alignment tool definitely helps your putts for sure. There's no doubt about that. I think this is a phenomenal design. I like how they've done the different colors. I think that as far as alignment tools go, I don't think there's a better one on the market than this one right now, period. I just don't think there is. I know Callaway just kind of released their triple track, but 360 all the way around, but I don't like it as much as I like this. I think this one's kind of the one to beat if you like alignment tools. I think it's going to help a lot of guys with their putts, especially guys who have a good sense of speed but just can't hit the ball where they want to. Um, the main drawback is going to be that price. Uh, do I recommend going out and buying this golf ball if you're someone who's a weekend warrior? Probably not, just because, again, the price, 43 a dozen is cheap, or pretty expensive. You could get a Q-Star Tour for 32 You could get a, a, a Vice for 37 for the Pro or Soft or the Pro, or heck, you could even do the Tour for 27 uh, the Cut DC for 29 There's a lot of competition here, and I think if you're a weekend warrior, there's other ventures you could go into to get another great golf ball. However, if you love TaylorMade, but you don't like the TP5 because of how unforgiving it is, here's your solution right here. This is 100% the solution. It's a great, you know, uh, in between, you know, balance of, hey, I want a really high performing ball, but the TP5 is a little too uh, unforgiving for me and I don't need the five layers of spin. Um, it's just a little too much. Here you go. That's the solution. Or if price doesn't matter to you and you just want a really good value tour ball, you're going out and playing maybe in a tournament and you just want a really good consistent golf ball that's going to give you consistent forgiving results, I also would recommend it for that. So very impressed there. Numbers didn't blow me away, but the consistency, forgiveness, and just the overall quality of the golf ball did. So, all right, guys, as always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning. Until next time, thanks so much.